few months ago, scientists announced the San Andreas Fault is due for another major earthquake, specifically in Southern California. Many who have gazed upon the natural contours of the San Andreas Fault have been filled with awe and the imminent fear of what Mother Earth is capable of. But things are becoming more intense following a shocking announcement by the Southern California Center, causing fear and panic among many people. Something is coming, but what is this? Is the San Andreas Fault about to be shaken again? Is the government hiding things from the public? Are we entering the end times? Join us as we show you all the possibilities and evidence that San Andreas Fault is about to do something huge. Before we delve into the recent announcement of the Southern California Center, we need to understand the context surrounding the San Andreas Fault Line. Everything about the San Andreas Fault speaks of the total wonder of nature. Here, the geological wonder cuts across California in a marathon crack of about 1,200 kilometers. This fault speaks of deep-rooted continuous activity underneath the Earth as it connects the American and Pacific tectonic plates. But what are these? Tectonic plates are large, rigid pieces of the Earth's lithosphere. They include the outermost shell of the Earth that floats on the semi-fluid asthenosphere beneath them. These plates constantly move, albeit very slowly, and interact at their boundaries. This movement and interaction give rise to various geological phenomena, including earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, mountain formation, and the creation of ocean basins. Of all these, what we fear most when we talk about the San Andreas Fault are earthquakes. These occur when there is a sudden release of energy in the Earth's crust, leading to the generation of seismic waves. These waves produce ground shaking, resulting in various degrees of destruction and damage to buildings, landscapes, infrastructures, and even lives. Formed about 300 million years ago in a time regarded as the Cenozoic Era, when both the North American and Pacific plates first touched, both plates of the San Andreas Fault have been moving past each other at an average of 20 to 35 millimeter, or 0.79 to 1.38 inches per year since then. Thus, it constantly builds and releases pressures that sum up to either unnoticeable or earth-wrecking quakes at unique intervals. Because of this, the San Andreas Fault has been one to fear in the past. However, things are getting more intense in recent times. This is because, for decades now, the San Andreas Fault has been moving with both plates pulling at each other and gathering pressure without any form of release being made. This is a real problem. A pressure sustained this long is worthy to be feared, and here's why. Continuous pressure builds a spring-like spring, a strain that mounts up in the fault line. Scientists know this strain will one day reach its limits and forcefully be released through a big quake when it does. The only question here is when. In this case, the knowledge that a strain constantly mounting up in the San Andreas Fault would eventually be released in a big quake one day plants a deep-rooted fear in the hearts of Californians. However, a recent announcement by the Southern California Center has not eased the tension of this fear, but has only made things worse. But what is the announcement about? The announcement simply states that the Earth is locked, loaded, and ready to go. This is not a joke, but we will make it plain if you wonder what it means. It simply means that the San Andreas Fault is a ticking time bomb that would likely explode any minute. But it gets even worse as the San Andreas Fault is divided into three sections, the Southern, Central, and Northern. The southern section is the most well-known and active portion of the fault running through Southern California, including the infamous Los Angeles area. The central section of the fault extends through the central coast region of California, passing near cities like San Luis Obispo and San Francisco. Finally, the northern section, the northernmost segment of the San Andreas Fault, passes through the northern part of California, extending into the Point Reyes Peninsula and beyond. Now, among these three sections, there is more tension in the southern section of the fault, where much of the warning is aimed at. In line with this, Thomas Jordan, director of the Southern California Earthquake Center at the University of Southern California, said in 2016 that the Southern San Andreas Fault is locked, loaded, and ready to go. He said this when speaking at the National Earthquake Conference in Long Beach, California. But what are his reasons? The answer points to an odd observation scientists about the Southern San Andreas Fault made. Now, 
While this portion of the fault is the most active section of all, it has been quiet since 1857. And just in case you were thinking otherwise, it is pertinent to know that this odd quietness is bad news, because it doesn't suggest peace or nature smiling on the region. Rather, it simply implies that something big might just be brooding. This is because the longer this portion of the fault stays silent, the greater the energy stored within it becomes. And as nature demands, this energy will be released someday soon. When that happens, scientists fear that it will be highly explosive. But here's the thing. The long silence of the Southern San Andreas Fault is not a new phenomenon but is rather one that has been studied and is well understood by scientists. Here, scientists understand that not all faults regularly encounter large earthquakes among the Earth's plate boundaries. Now these faults are segments where the largest earthquakes are known to occur at very distant intervals. Scientifically, these segments are referred to as seismic gaps. Apart from giving it a name, scientists have also been able to make successful forecasts about seismic gaps regarding when they are likely expected to produce very large earthquakes. The Southern San Andreas Fault is a good example of a seismic gap. Here, geologic studies show that within the past 1400 to 1500 years, large earthquakes have been consistent in the Southern San Andreas Fault at intervals of 150 years each. Hence, with the last major earthquake in this portion of the fault taking place in 1857, about 170 years ago, it is clear that the Southern San Andreas Fault is overdue for another big shake. Therefore, according to the Southern California Center, the Southern San Andreas Fault is good to go with a seismic storm in view. Scientists predict that this seismic storm will eventually be released in a massive earthquake between a magnitude of 7 to 8 on the Richard scale, and there is nothing good about this. The predictions about the looming dangers in the Southern San Andreas Fault has not been rashly made but is rather a well-calculated one with organizations like the United States Geological Survey, or USGS, the California Geological Survey, or CGS, and the Earthscope Plate Boundary Observatory, or PBO, involved. These are bodies that constantly monitor the San Andreas Fault for earthquake signs. The USGS operates a network of seismic sensors throughout California, including many specifically placed to monitor the San Andreas Fault. The CGS is a state agency that provides geological information and services to the public. The CGS operates a network of GPS stations that track the movement of the Earth's crust along the San Andreas Fault, providing relevant information to the public on earthquake matters. As for the PBO, it is a consortium of universities and government agencies that is conducting a long-term study of the San Andreas Fault and other major plate boundary faults in the western United States. The PBO operates a network of seismic sensors, GPS stations, and other instruments that monitor the movement of the Earth's crust and other geological processes along the San Andreas Fault. Altogether, these organizations stand as valuable watchmen over the San Andreas Fault, but the results of recent observations have not been good. However, the recent announcement by the Southern California Center is said to be made not to instill fear in the public, but to keep everyone alert on the current reality of the fault, to be prepared for what may seemingly be the region's future. This future builds on a past well enriched with major seismic activities that the world will forever remember. As a matter of fact, you might not really understand what awaits the San Andreas Fault in the future without having a peek into the past, so let's dive in. Let's talk about the seismic activities of the San Andreas Fault in the past. The history of the Southern San Andreas Fault regarding earthquakes has been interesting and stretched through thousands of years. In a study by C.S. Stuyver and Brillinger in 1989, it was deduced that this portion of the fault had witnessed major earthquakes with their unique 150-year intervals, occurring in 1113 46, 1480, 1680, 1812, and 1857 A.D. Among these are two exceptionally impressive huge events, occurring in 1114 80 AD, respectively. According to the study, these earthquakes were so large that they appear to have ruptured the fault from the Salton Sea to Central California, more than 300 miles. The 1857 earthquake has become the most relatable earthquake on the list, as it is quite similar to the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. The 1857 earthquake is famously known as the Fort Tejon earthquake. 
and occurred about 8.20 a.m. Pacific time on January 9th. Since its currencies, this earthquake has been considered one of the largest recorded earthquakes that have ever hit the United States, having a mind-blowing magnitude estimated to be 7.9. As the newspaper explains, this earthquake resulted in ground movements that indicated a right lateral strike slip. Studies on the offset stream channels indicated that about a depth of 29 feet of ground movement had occurred during the earthquake, and that's so much ground shaking, you would permit us to say. The earthquake was said to have ruptured the southern part of the San Andreas Fault, running over 225 miles or 350 kilometers through Parkfield and Wrightwood. Here, the shock was majorly centered near Parkfield. However, the event is still officially referred to as the Fort Tejon earthquake, taking root in the fact that the location that was mostly damaged from the event is Fort Tejon. Fort Tejon is located just north of the San Andreas and Garlock Faults Junction. Beyond the most recent earthquake that has occurred in that region of the fault, it is estimated to have a maximum hirsute intensity of IX on the modified Mercalli scale, which is quite violent as the event brings to mind the famous San Francisco earthquake in 1906. Californians will not forget the 1906 San Francisco earthquake in a hurry, and several reasons exist. But what is the story behind this earthquake? The earthquake occurred around 5.12 in Pacific Standard Time on Wednesday, April 18th. In the event, the coast of Northern California was hit by the earthquake in a major way as it was estimated to have been in a magnitude of 7.9 and a silver T on the modified Mercalli scale, which is quite an extreme case. The earthquake was said to have violently shaken the ground from Eureka on the north coast to the Salinas Valley, an agricultural region towards the south of San Francisco Bay. Now, one reason this earthquake would forever remain unforgettable is that it is a good portrayal of nature's rage. The earthquake led to many damaging consequences, during the event, devastating fires had broken out. It lasted for several days. In the event, about 80% of the city was said to have been destroyed. Now, imagine the earth violently swallowing up structures and crumbling massive buildings as it pleases. You could partially guess what the San Francisco earthquake would have looked like, but it gets even worse as nothing parallels the worth of the human lives lost. Over 3,000 people were killed in the event, causing the whole city to mourn greatly. The San Francisco earthquake of 1906 will forever be remembered as one of the deadliest earthquakes ever recorded in United States history. It is quite understandable that this is all in the past. Still, nothing is as dreadful as imagining this kind of event replicating itself in the future. However, this is what the recent warming of the Southern California Center entails. An earthquake ranging from a magnitude of 7, 8, which the Southern California Center predicts, is no joke as it promises to be as serious as the San Francisco Bay event in 1906. Worse still, it could be more deadly, especially if the earthquake unfortunately reaches a magnitude of 8. But what's the difference between a magnitude 7.9 and a magnitude 8 earthquake, seeing that they are just a point apart? Well, it will shock you to know the answer, but this can only be understood when we consider the concept of magnitudes. So, Let's talk about what every magnitude on the Richter scale means for an earthquake in the San Andreas Fault. Considering the great number of seismic tensions hovering within the Earth amidst the colossal reservoirs of the San Andreas Fault, one would wonder what is the fate of California as scientists believe that an earthquake with a magnitude ranging from 7, the 8th of May occur in the San Andreas Fault before 2032. Here, the answer might be a highly catastrophic future that has likely never been seen before, but we must first understand what each magnitude means to even know this. In earthquakes, magnitude refers to measuring the energy an earthquake releases at its source. It quantifies the earthquake's size and strength. The most commonly used scale for measuring earthquake magnitude is the Richter scale, or more commonly today, the Moment Magnitude Scale, MW. Magnitude is typically represented by a single number, such as magnitude 6.0. It is a logarithmic scale, which means that each whole number increase on the scale represents a tenfold increase in the amplitude of seismic waves and approximately 31.6 times more energy released. So, a magnitude 7.0 earthquake is significantly more powerful than a magnitude 6.0 earthquake. In other words, 
Every increase in the magnitude of an earthquake event displays a high excavation in energy release. It would be more physically felt, with a great potential of stirring up dormant storms in their thousands. In the range of possible magnitudes of earthquakes that could hit the Earth, magnitude 9 on the Richter scale is the highest, and it is known to release what is officially recognized as a megaquake, releasing 1,000 times more energy than that of a magnitude 7 earthquake. This is one perfect example of the fact that there is quite a huge gap between each magnitude. With the tension about the future, many have attempted to create a perfect picture of what a major earthquake in the San Andreas Fault may look like when it happens. Among the many attempts, we also find Hollywood giving it a shot with a movie called San Andreas, released in 2015. Anyone who has seen this movie will likely cower and desperately pray for the future as it presents a magnitude 9.1 earthquake hitting the fault. But one would wonder how accurate the scenes presented in this movie are and if there can ever be a future as catastrophic as that in California. The truth is that the movie contains some exaggeration that scientists have confirmed. One notably wrong scene in the movie is the tsunami outbreak, which is quite terrifying. In reality, scientists posit that the San Andreas Fault Route does not traverse water bodies to spark tsunamis in the event of a large earthquake. However, the destruction of properties that may result from a magnitude 9.0 earthquake remains greatly feared, although hope seems to present itself in this regard through California's recent building codes. California has stringent building codes aimed at reducing damages in the event of an earthquake. These codes are primarily governed by the California Building Code, or CBC, and the California Residential Code, or CRC, updated regularly to incorporate the latest seismic research and engineering practices. Some key features of these earthquake-resistant building codes include the seismic zone designations. Here, California is divided into various seismic zones based on the likelihood and intensity of earthquakes. Buildings must adhere to specific design requirements depending on their location within these zones. There is also foundation design, where structures in California must have foundations designed to resist seismic forces. This often involves the use of reinforced concrete or steel foundation elements. Buildings are constructed with reinforced structural systems, including shear walls, cross bracing, or moment resisting frames to distribute seismic forces and prevent structural failure. Older buildings must often undergo seismic retrofitting to meet current earthquake resistance standards. This includes strengthening their foundations and structural components. Building codes also address non-structural elements such as ceilings, partitions, and utilities to ensure they do not pose a hazard during an earthquake. To top this, builders and engineers must conduct a seismic hazard assessment for a project's specific location, which considers factors like ground motion and soil conditions. The choice of building materials, such as reinforced concrete and steel, is regulated to enhance earthquake resistance. Here, some regions with higher seismic risk may have additional requirements, such as liquefaction mitigation measures for areas prone to soil liquefaction during earthquakes. The California Building Codes also include provisions for safe evacuation during an earthquake, including clear exit paths and emergency lighting. Ultimately, these codes aim to ensure public safety and compliance is rigorously enforced through inspections and permitting processes. However, there is a downside to this, as these building codes only apply to new buildings. This means that older buildings are still in danger and are susceptible to great damage in the event of a large earthquake. As for exactly when this major earthquake in the San Andreas Fault is likely to happen, no one knows as nature cannot be understood. Thus, while we prepare for a future that doesn't promise to be so good, we can only hope for the best. Thanks for watching. Check out the video you see on your screen right now. It's unbelievable.